So hi, good evening all of you. I'm sure you're so smart enough to use these smartphones every day. We are using so many applications in our phones. We are daily interacting with a lot of people over the internet and especially during the pandemic. We are completely gone online. We started chatting with a lot of people. We started downloading a lot of things. We actually become technology advanced. But ultimately, when it comes to cybersecurity, in this past two years, we have observed that there is a great spike in the number of cyber crimes or the number of cyber incidents in past almost two years. You'll be surprised to know this. There has been 700% in the rise of cyber crime. And what number that you have been seeing on your screen is the number of accounts have been compromised in past almost two years of the time. And not only that, most of it's the websites that you have been using is now you know, being hacked or now already hacked and your data, who are sitting over here, are already available on the internet. I'll show you in the next five minutes that I'm 100% sure that out of almost 200 people who are sitting over here, 199 people's data are available on the internet. Your 2011's password also, your 2012's password also, 13's password, 14's password, and 21's password also, are also available on the internet because we are topping the list of the data breaches in India, and yes, if you are shocked, then this is a fact that we are actually in the top of the world where the number of data breaches are actually very high. And that's not me who is saying, that's the World Economic Forum report that is saying because almost out of three websites in India, two websites are almost getting attacked. When startups are getting for funding or going for funding and getting funded, you know, the second day they are being attacked and almost all the data of the startups are being breached. When it comes to the BFSI sector, more than 2,90,000 incidences have been reported in past almost two years. If you talk about some of the unicorn startups, even this unicorn startups have been attacked in past almost two years. So what I'm trying to say by telling all these startups and data breaches which are happening in past almost two years, that your data and my data are already available on the internet. So let's check that, that whether you are already attacked or whether you are already compromised or not. So I just request anybody from the audience to please, you know, give me their email ID so that I can check whether they are already attacked or not. And if you want to check whether you are already attacked or not, you can simply go to a website which is known as haveibeenpawned.com. Just to tell you one thing, whatever internet that we are using right now is just 4% of the total internet world or a digital space. The rest, 95% of the internet is a black world, which is known as a dark web and the deep web. So what people will do, that people will get into a website, download a data, go to dark web, deep web, sell your data and make money out of it. And that's how the hacking world is actually growing and expanding day by day. So it is very easy for me to, you know, find out what is your email ID from your Facebook, from your LinkedIn, from your Yahoo or anywhere on the internet. And finally, I can go to this website to check whether you're already attacked or not. And within five minutes, I'll come to know what is your password. May I have any brave volunteer from the audience, please? What's your, your email ID, ma'am? Let me check whether Rishita is attacked or not. Rishita, congratulations, you're already being pawned. And how you are attacked, because you registered on Big Basket, which is attack in October 2020. You're also a very good user of a Domino's, which is attack in April 2021. You are a Dub Smash user, you are Elanic user, IM user, Ixigo user, Zomato user, Zoomcar user, and all these websites are attacked. And just because of that, your password is available on the internet. Just to tell you, if you haven't changed your password after October 2021, because that was the last hack, then first you go and change your password. Most of the people, what they do is, they keep all the passwords as same password. So I have my Gmail password is also same. You know, LinkedIn password is also same. You have your you know, other accounts password is also same. So this is one of the privilege for a hacker that they can go to dark web and a deep web. Now, if you don't need anything at home, we go and throw it in the dustbin. The same applies on the internet also. If I actually want to know that, where is the Rishita's password? I'll just go and type paste bin and then I type LinkedIn hack database. See what I'm doing, a layman is typing you know, LinkedIn hack database. And right now, what you can see on the screen, I have a link which is open. And this link is giving me a URL. And through this URL, I can actually dump the username and password of 159 million LinkedIn accounts. So imagine that 
that 159 million accounts can be downloaded within the matter of seconds. You can go control F, you know, search for Rishita, you can type big basket hack database and you get the database, right? So this is something what is happening on the internet. So the first thing that I can tell you is, please change your password regularly. Don't keep the password which is the same password which you have kept it for last almost, you know, three times or maybe a five times and do not connect your email IDs. I always suggest that keep one email ID, connect all of this email ID to that email ID and make sure that that email ID is a doormat email ID. There is an advantage of doing that because if your email ID is hacked, you cannot hack the connected email IDs also. And the best part is, if Rishita's Gmail will be hacked, I can go to Rishita's Gmail and I'm sure you must be having your Facebook, LinkedIn, your other accounts which are connected, say yes or no? Yes, so that's something that we need to actually look after. You know, so we need to change the password. The second thing is, you know, like we give our phones to everybody, our son, daughter, you know, are playing with our phones. You know, you, you get a link saying that you get, you're getting a cash back, you're getting some offers, you know, please become a member of this. We are actually upgrading your credit card. We are giving you free loans also. And what people used to do is they download the apps. Now, what wrong can happen if you download the app? So I have a brave volunteer who is from the audience. Would you mind coming down and give your phone if you don't mind? Right, just for a second. Perfect. So I've taken his phone, right? What simply I can do is I can send a message saying that, hey, I've credited 200 rupees in your LensCart account. Do one thing, click on this link and avail the discount. When the person is going to click on this link and going to avail the discount, a very simple way what I'm going to do is I'm going to install my application into his phone and that application is going to have a malware embedded into it. And once that malware is embedded into it, I'm just giving a phone to him. Can you please take your phone? Yeah. So once the phone has downloaded the app and once you have installed the app, I'm sure what you can see right now on the screen is I have this person's all data which are on my screen right now. Are you registered in the Kotak Bank? Yes or no? Yes, this is your number, this is your data. Is this your all call logs or the contacts? Can you see your call logs? Yeah. Right, that this is your call logs. I mean, can you see these are all your contacts? If you don't mind telling me these are all your contacts, yes or no? Right, would you mind opening a WhatsApp? He has no answer to it. <laughs> so what you can see is, you know, within two minutes, I can actually get into a phone. See, the most dangerous part of this kind of a hacking or this kind of apps, which are taking a data from your phone, is not about WhatsApp or is not about your call log, or it's not about your call logs or contacts. But for me, the most dangerous thing is your SMS. I tell you why because you're registered on the UPI, and whenever you want to reset your UPI password, the OTP of the bank comes on your SMS. If you're registered on the Gmail, even if you have a two-factor authentication, the SMS or the OTP comes on your phone. So what you can see right now on the screen, that by just a matter of clicks, you know, and just installing this one app can take away all the data of your phone. So the first thing that I can tell you is, or the second thing that I can tell you is, that you don't need to give your phone to anybody, right? Second is, you don't need to install the unknown apps or the untrusted apps on your phone. And I'm 100% sure if I would ask 200 people who are present over here, that without looking a phone, tell me how many apps are installed on your phone, nobody would be having the answer to that question. So now you need to ask a question to your, you know, yourself, that why would I have this app installed on my phone? Because this kind of apps, you know, can only be sent by a hacker but we are having so many applications which are taking your phone logs, contacts, your WhatsApp, your SD card data also. So kindly give the permissions, do not give the data of this particular, you know, right, the phone also. Coming back to some of the recent hacks and what are the lessons which are learned in the recent hacks that I want to explain. And then finally we have a very good demonstration on none other than Jimmy Mystery's website itself, and we'll be demonstrating how a simple person can log into his website, or a layman can even log into his website also. And yes, Jimmy, I've taken your concern before showing this demonstration, thank you. Right, so even Yahoo got hacked, a very simple reason that hacker was reporting a problem for three years, and what Yahoo was giving him a t-shirt and a $1,000, whereas hacker has made already $150,000 by selling this dark web and deep web data. Equifax is also hacked, LinkedIn got hacked, Musk is hacked, We are. And on the top of the list of this, 
you know, data breaches, when it comes to the debit card and the credit card, almost all the well-known banks in India got attacked, even the Bangladesh bank got hacked, Cosmos is hacked, Pakistani banks got hacked, and yes, right, you would be surprised to know this, there was a power outage in Mumbai for six hours in 2020, I'm sure Mumbai people must be knowing this, and that was none other than but the cyber attack on the southern grid of the Mumbai, and that was because of the south, you know, cyber attack, the whole Mumbai was out of the power for almost six hours of the time. So hackers are not at all targeting only the IT of the internet, but they are now moving to the OT of the internet, known as the operational technologies of the internet. The biggest companies, power plants, nuclear plants, you know, the, uh, even, even the water treatment plants, even the water transmission plants, everything are actually getting attacked nowadays. And yes, they are not even leaving the vessels also. So the things which are actually sailing in the boat, you know, sailing on the sea, you know, they are also getting attacked and almost 50,000 things are getting attacked. So what is the problem? So the biggest problem is, you know, we always create a maze in the organizations. Most of the businessmen who are sitting over here, they are actually depending on their IT people to secure their networks. And what IT people will do is, they take one box, second box, a third idiot box, and they connect all the box together and tell you that, hey boss, we are completely secured and nobody could able to hack us. But one thing that we need to understand, cyber security is a process and it has never been a product. You need to invite hackers to your organization, you need to invite those, you know, even good guys, in, uh, I'm not saying bad guys to your organization, but the good hackers to your organization and let them hack your network, let them hack your website, and then only you can actually get secured. If you are thinking that we are secured, we are not secured. The reason I'm telling you, the transition in the hacking world is happening. People are not targeting the servers, your databases, your confidential information, but what people are targeting is your available information on the internet. So it is so easy for me to go to dark web, find out Rishita's, you know, 10 passwords, and I'm sure and I'm 100% sure that one of the password of Rishita would work for me, and I could break, you know, completely disrupt the Rishita's digital identity also on the internet. So that is something what is happening. If we are relying only on the antiviruses, we are not going to be secured. If we are relying only on the firewall, we are not going to be secured. If we are only relying on the IDS, we are not going to be secured. And one thing that we need to understand, that you are a hacker, that's Sunny, that's why you can able to do this, no. Right? Hackers never create loopholes. The loopholes are always created by you. It is you who has downloaded the app. It is you who has installed the app, clicked on the link. The hackers are simply exploiting your lack of awareness, and hackers are simply exploiting the knowledge that you don't have. So one thing that we need to ensure, the weakest link in the cybersecurity is a human. We need to get aware. We need to participate into the awareness sessions to ensure that we are safe, and if we are safe, our organization is also going to be safe. So that is something that I want to demonstrate, and just to tell you, you know, I've taken a concern from Jimmy Mystery, and I was running a very simple tool, which, is, which can be downloaded in the matter of seconds. You know, I've downloaded the tool, I entered the Jimmy Mystery's website, but the developer has committed some few of the mistake, and because of this mistake, what I can see right now, this is Jimmy's, you know, database. And what I can see is this is the complete, you know, table name and the username and password. And this is what the password is. I do have this password, which is displayed over here on the last, you know, line. So what simply I can do is I can go to this particular, you know, website, right, of a Jimmy mystery, right? And the most importantly, you know, what Jimmy has done is that I just type slash admin. I got the username and the password fill. I entered the ID, entered the password and enter. And I'm all done for that, right? So imagine that. Hacking is becoming very easy day by day. Because nowadays we guys have an operating system known as Kali Linux, which is like an operating system made by hackers, made for hackers, and only for a hacking purpose. So it's very easy for anybody to download, install, and do everything. So here, I just wanted to you know, wind up my session by telling you one thing. You are always a target of a hacker. Never ever think that you and your organization can never be a target of a hacker. Cybersecurity is not a product, but it's a process. Invite hackers, let them hack you, and the best way to secure yourself is to hack it yourself. Thank you, thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity and keeping such a good patience and hearing me for a long time. Thank you.